Welcome to the end of Demon Souls. Let's take a plunge. So, once you've defeated all the Archdemons and the False King Alant, talking to the Candle Maiden will prompt this sequence. Like mentioned before, you can no longer level up. And also, you need to talk to her. You need to jump down with her, or else you'll just die. Yeah, I tried it. This is no King Seeker for Amped. You are not doing this on your own. But luckily, we land in sand. Very flat sand, which is probably still hard, but... Yeah, she's fine. She can't die anyway. Say hello to the Great Old One, mentioned in story and song. It's a slug tree. That is covered in swords. Because I guess people tried to kill it the old-fashioned way? That does not work. No. And they sent seagulls after it. That didn't work either. I do like how they've got the seagulls that are... You know, give you like the sense of scale that how big this thing is. Come now, yep. Be good. And they're probably all going to be crushed by it. Well, it wants their tiny little seagull skulls. As big as this thing could potentially be, we're basically just going up its nostril. And not much farther in it. isn't clear why the Candle Maiden has any kind of power over this thing. We just need her to. I do wonder how much of it is actually modeled in-game. Like, at what point do they just fade out the geometry? I do like its design. I like the design of anything that's covered in that many swords to show you. Nope, this thing's unbeatable. Let us proceed below to its lair. Let Wait. Us yeah, we we both did that at the same time, going, <laughs> I think she's broken. No, I guess the lair is within itself. Yep. So let's go explore it. And the chorus effect. Who could possibly be talking to us? You are our first visitor. May you be welcome here. King Alant. Yep, the real King Alant. He looks great. Yeah, so. This is all his fault. He wanted the demons to come, and he wanted to become an archdemon. And guess what? He failed. Look at his arm. He's got Soul Brant stuck in it. And he's kind of stretchy. Yep, and he can't really hurt you. He looks like a barnacled version of one of the Bloodborne monsters. He, he could very easily be in Bloodborne. Right, killing him gives you Silbrant. Yay, and we haven't mentioned it yet, but now that we've got both of the Brants in New Game Plus, I think once I give the Red Hot Demon Soul to What's-His-Face, he will combine them. And they become a badass sword called Northern Regalia. Yep, it has properties of both of them. Does damage based on your character tendency, uh, no matter if it's pure black or pure white, and it does a lot of damage. The Nexus shall imprison thee no longer. 
I don't want that anymore. Well, if that are candles, how will she be the candle maiden? Well, simply put, she's retiring. Yep, this is her purpose. So here's why both I and Yami have recorded separately. There's two separate things you can do here. Yep. You can just stab her in the ass and be a dick. Or you can do what I'm going to do and just walk out. Thorne's going to be a cool guy. He's going to leave. The old one will go back to sleep. And peaceful return to the world. At last my duty is fulfilled. All the demons will be gone, but so will all knowledge of the soul arts. Which sucks for people who use the soul arts. But hey, they're kind of dicks. Yeah, I don't know how to get out. I mean, I guess the art stone still works. There is an art stone down here. Oh, right. You know, if you come down here and go, wait, I want to do some more stuff. You can get out. The old one, along with the maiden, were swept back into the lulling fog. Boletaria was spared from the demons, but also lost its knowledge of soul arts. Well, when it's been utterly destroyed the by the demons, the kind of hard to be spared from that at the end. And today, the unstable world has another monumental to hold its fabric together. A brave new hero of unprecedented power. Yep, that's you. You get to be the new monumental. With all of the soul power you have acquired over the course of the game. Wow. That sounds boring, and lame, and dumb. So let's have Yami show you how to have fun. Garl Vinland does not do lame, dumb, boring things. And he doesn't need a big-ass weapon. Nope. I am so powerful. Well, oh, she does not have much health. She has one. But, so, with that, in the rudest possible fashion, I do what we've been doing all along. Gaining all of this soul power so that I can become the Old One's Archdemon. The Old One sensed a new and powerful demon by its side. And before long, the world will be engulfed by the deep fog literally destroy the world bring more souls i want all them souls so the world can be mended nope well there you have it folks that was demon souls sort of a slap shot lp of it when it comes down to it but i had fun uh, it's, uh, there's a couple of things uh, before we sort of wrap up. This is the credit sequence from Yami's playthrough when you kill the the Candle Maiden. It's actually a different song than what it plays when you, than when you leave, and has different images. So once we're done here, and we've gone through the credits, and we take a little bit of a look at New Game Plus, mostly just right at the beginning, um, I'm going to let that play, but we won't be commentating. But, uh, what do you think, Yami? What did you think of the LP? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's always a little hard to LP one of these games because, you know, it's hard to predict what's going to happen, and especially with the world tendency stuff. You know, you can't plan. And it's, you know, it's auto saves all the time. And with the on the PS3, they block copying saves. Oh, yeah. So the most backup you can possibly have is a single cloud save. If you pay for PS Plus. Which I actually use to go back and get the last of the Dark World Tendency stuff. But, uh... 
Even with all its rough spots, I still love this game. Oh yeah. It was the toehold of the whole Souls franchise into the Western world. It's funny to think how it basically just sort of quietly gained an audience enough so it's like originally it wasn't properly localized until people took notice of it and they took care of it properly. And it is a very interesting game because uh, when you think about the Dark Souls games, which left off of this, but um, there is a grit and funnily enough, a darkness to Demon Souls that none of the games really touched again. I, I would argue at least until Bloodborne. There are many things that uh, that they called back to with Demon Souls, but the tone and the atmosphere never quite touched it, and it gives this game a real charm. So that even w with the gameplay improvements that the Dark Souls and Bloodborne games brought, there's still definitely a reason to come back to this one. Yeah, because this game has, I'd say, even less story than those, all the stories focus around some of the NPCs you find, and they're all terrible. <laughs> it's awful. Because, I mean, each world has its own little story. You know. World 1 is obviously about Astrava's journey to try and find out what happened, and then he finds out that, yeah, his dad did all this on purpose. He discovered and used the soul arts to try and call the old one, because he wanted to be an archdemon. World 2 is about the, you know, diggers digging too deep and too greedily and finding the dragon god. Oops. Yep. World 3 is about the old monk who is jealous of the queen's power and when the demons came, cast her out and put her in the prison of hope. She's actually that merchant you find near the beginning. That was her, like, conclusively? Pretty much. I mean, you know, it's hard to say anything conclusively about these games. But all signs point to that. Um, and he used all of his power to do that. Ooh, what is the Red Eye Stone? That is the um, Let Me Invade You Stone. Oh. And depending on which ending you choose, you get either the Old One Soul or the Candle Maiden Soul. Uh, the Old One Soul is only good for using to get souls. Whereas the Candle Maiden Soul, I think, can be traded in for a spell. I believe it gives you Soul Sucker. Which lets you drain a soul level from another person. Oh, so we get to go back against Old King a lot. Yeah, good luck hitting with that. I... Um... Yeah. This is the Nexus. It holds together the Northern Land Like Dark Souls Lord and Mario. Bloodborne, as soon as you beat this game, you get immediately tossed into New Game Thou Plus. Not exit the Nexus, but each of the five Archstones will connect... I do like that she's, you know, summoned so many people and had to explain this so many times that she doesn't even care that you passed out. <laughs> it's like a telemarketer. She's going to go through her spiel whether you like it or not. Interestingly, there's way more player phantoms in New Game Plus than there were in regular New Game. It's mostly people doing PvP, and that's just where the level tends to line up. But, uh, yeah. World 4, the Shrine of Storm, doesn't have much of a story. It's more your following the journey of the dead as they, you know, go through the shrine and into the catacombs to be buried. And of course, World 5 is made in Astraea. We've, you know, we went over that extensively in its own video. Yep. We more or less flush ourselves to meet her. Yep. And we are the bad guys. I would be. But at the same time, I feel like since Dark Souls just teases you a little too much, I feel like with breadcrumbs of a story, I like how Demon Souls, it's pretty clear what the story is, but it's the details that it leaves for you to learn about. Right. I love putting the lore of these games together. I am obsessed with it. 
It's kind of a shame that my original plan for this LP didn't pan out. A couple years ago, I reintroduced Travis to Dark Souls because uh, he hadn't gotten so much into it. I mostly just enticed him by pointing out that a lot of Hidetaka Miyazaki's stuff is inspired by Berserk, and Travis is a big fan of Berserk. So it got him really into Dark Souls. So I wanted to bring him back and introduce him to Demon Souls, and maybe we would co-op the rest of the Souls games. Due to his work, he had to drop out of that pretty much entirely. But I was glad that you were able to join me. I had a lot of fun going through this, even though as soon as you joined in, I stopped being the expert. I don't know why. <laughs> Probably because it was so long in between the last time I recorded with Travis and picking the LP back up again with you, but... Well, thanks for having me. I was glad to have a good reason to revisit this game now that I've got so much more Souls game experience under my belt that it was practically a different experience for me now. Yeah, the game controls way slower and heavier than the later ones. Right, but now that I'm used to, you know, leveling up your weapons is important. It's a slow, methodical game. You are going to die. That... I just had a lot more fun playing it now. Plus with a co-op partner, it's always fun. Yeah, and possibly down the line. I don't know how soon, but I would like to move on to either Dark Souls or just go straight to Bloodborne because I fucking love Bloodborne. Bloodborne is one of my favorite games, period, hands down. Yeah, totally. So good. But that'll be later. We'll decide later. For now, thank you again, Yami, for joining me. Thank you, Travis, for joining me for the first half of this LP, and thank you all for watching. We'll see you later. Good night.